Hi, and welcome to Mods. We're keeping you connected to inspiring science with virtual camp discovery, brought to you by Citrix, the museum's official innovation partner. In today's episode, you'll observe matter in everyday life. What's the matter? Solid, liquid, gas, or plasma? You decide because you matter too. Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Michael. And I'm Brady. Today, we are talking about the states that matter. So we're talking about Florida, Texas. No, 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 no. we're talking about the states of matter. Oh, of I'm matter. sorry. Physical matter, we're talking about chemistry, not geography. Misread that, I'll have to talk to the director yes. later. So we're talking about the states of matter. And Brady, what are the states of matter? So matter is anything that takes up space, right? Okay. Anything in the physical realm. Like my imaginary friend, Tim. Uh, so your imaginary friend, Tim, might matter to you. He does. But he doesn't technically categorize as matter. He's not matter in the physical realm like we're talking about, like chemistry. Okay, and what are the actual states of matter? So there's a few different categories that matter, uh, or anything that takes up space, can fit into. There's solids, liquids, gases, and plasma. And if we were to break it down to a really tiny level that usually we don't get to see because of our eyes, yeah. how would you show our viewers how solids behave on the molecular level? Yeah, so a solid like this table here yep. uh, is a solid form. The molecules are bonded it, together. So it's just kind of like... So tight that they can't move. There's just, and they're it, just all packed in together, holding a solid shape. It's not flexible. It's just like... like and I can't like walk away from you, right? Like it, it would just- You can, would... but you would be changing your state of matter. Oh, what state of matter would I be changing to then? So as you're going a little farther apart, you're still bonded together and you have room to move around and you're flexible, that's a state of matter we call a liquid. Right? Oh, okay. And then what if I was just to bounce off the walls and go everywhere, what would we call that? So molecules that are not bonded together and just free roaming, chaotically going around uh, are a gas. That's how a gas looks in its molecular form. So if there were like many of me and I just ate a whole bunch of sugar and I just started running around like crazy, it would kind of be a really good interpretation of what gas would look like. Yeah, the gas like the air in the room, the air that we're breathing in and out uh, and is flowing through the room is a gas form, and there's a lot of different chemicals in there, but their state of matter is a gas form, and there's, uh, those molecules are not taking up a shape. So if we were going to have like actual examples here, and I see that we, we have brought some, let's talk about solids first. So I, I think you have a solid yeah. back here. So, so this is our solid. This is a solid block of ice, right? right? Which is frozen water. Find okay. In the freezer, if you take a cup of water and put it in the freezer, it turns into a solid block of ice, right? So. These are water molecules bonded together so tight that they've turned into a solid. Now, water behaves much differently than every other uh, liquid because when you freeze water, it does the opposite. And what is that? Yeah, so when most things freeze, the molecules, again, they're tight, packing in tight together. And so the whole uh, structure shrinks a little bit. It okay. gets a little smaller. Ice, frozen water, expands a little bit, takes up a little bit more space. Got you. So this is why, you know, engineers and people who use liquid nitrogen or, or something really cold, they actually use it to shrink items so that it will fit into a fastener or they can um, do other things with it, make it easier to work with, and then they'll let the heat yeah. hit it so that it expands, whereas the opposite here, this actually expands when it's yeah. frozen. So if you put a frozen water, if you put a water bottle in the freezer and it freezes, uh, it'll kind of pop out, it might even pop. Okay, we can leave that right here if you want. Yeah. And do we have a liquid? Yeah, so if I were to leave that in the balloon and let it melt, it would look like this. This is just liquid water in here and it's taking the shape of the balloon uh, because it is liquid water, it's kind of uh, flexible, right? It's fluid. It, it takes up the shape of whatever it's in. And I know that's holding the shape of the balloon because if I was to pop the balloon, the water would not stay in the shape of the balloon. It would just... We'd all get wet, yes. We'd all get wet. Absolutely. Okay. And then what about a gas? So a gas, and water is an interesting example because water, based on its temperature really, uh, can be a solid liquid or a gas. If you have water in the freezer, it turns into a block of ice. If you take it out, let it melt, it turns into a liquid... Uh, like water we drink or right. get out of the sink. Uh, and if you take the same glass of water, throw it out on the sidewalk and leave it in the sun, it evaporates, those molecules break apart. And kind of does like one of these right here, except you can't yeah. see it. So it turns into a gas. 
right? Okay. And so there's gas in this balloon. Uh, and in the balloon, we blew this up with our breath, so it's mostly carbon dioxide, but there's water vapor in there, right? Because water vapor is part of our atmosphere. Got it. And in any of those situations, uh, whether it's water vapor, ice, or liquid water, it's still the same chemical, H2O. It's still water. It just changes the physical shape it's in. We call that a physical change. So water can be all three of those. Yes. Can everything be all three of those or uh, not necessarily? No, so most things can't. Usually just water. There's other examples like carbon dioxide can be a gas or a solid, which is what we call dry ice. Uh, but there's no liquid carbon dioxide. There's no liquid form of carbon dioxide. Uh, most chemicals can only be one or two states of matter uh, going through their physical change, but water can be uh, three out of the four states of matter. Fantastic. And then I see you have these two large, look like cannonballs yeah, back here. So what is, are we showing with those? So this is to demonstrate our fourth state of matter, uh, plasma, right? Which okay. is actually the most abundant state of matter. Okay, in the universe, right? Like that is just- In the whole universe. Some people think it might be like gas or even solid because of planets, but not all planets are solid as we found yeah. out. So, all right, go ahead. So many stars are plasma, like our home star, the sun, basically made out of plasma. Plasma is like fire, lightning, some of those extreme things that you can't really uh, fit into the, one of those three simple categories of a solid liquid or a gas. And we're gonna demonstrate plasma here uh, kind of in the same concept of lightning or something. A lot of friction, uh, uh, expanding and changing the electrical charge of some chemicals and bringing us a very intense reaction. And with this cannonball, which is covered in rust, and these are solid cannonballs, this one is covered in rust, and this one is covered in aluminum foil. When I hit them together with some friction, the oxygen in the rust is gonna react to the aluminum, the aluminum foil, and bring us some sparks, which are not a solid liquid or a gas, but a plasma. Woo! See, and it doesn't really happen when I just tap it, when I add some friction, we see those sparks. And those sparks, uh, I wouldn't call a solid liquid or a gas, it's plasma. And of course, I can't hold the plasma on my hand because it's just extremely hot, right? It's also why it's a yeah. flash. Very it doesn't hot. just happen this to is stay. from a very intense reaction, kind of like lightning. And lightning happens naturally on our atmosphere on a much, much larger scale with a lot of very intense things happening. Uh, but this is a very small handheld uh, simulation of that. Awesome. Well, thank you for talking about states of matter. As we found out, they do matter. And we'll look forward to seeing everybody on the next episode. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Virtual Camp Discovery. Special thanks to Citrix, Mod's official innovation partner for powering this series. Please stay safe and connected with Mod's by visiting our social channels at MODSFTL.